Assignment Personality Swap by Bella Anti on AO3. Summary. It was a normal day in Class 1A. Emphasis on was. Really, when Aizawa was leaving his lecture on the importance of personas in heroics, they should have just listened. Instead, they get to deal with Midoriya that acts like Bakugo for the day. Hint, it's terrifying. Or, I wanted to write a personality swap story, so here's 5k of exactly that. It was a normal day when the chaos started. Emphasis on the was. Class 1A was in session, school was about to end for the day, and the weekend was only an arm's length away. The students were barely listening to their homeroom teacher as they did their best to sneak pack their bags. And then abruptly, Aizawa shut off the display facing them head on. All right, since you've all decided that this lesson isn't interesting enough to keep your attention, Aizawa started, flashing his quirk for good measure. You'll be doing a more hands-on approach to the matter. The statement managed to catch the interest of the students. The 20 kids finally gave their full attention to the man. After all, the topic had been about creating hero personas and how some heroes separate their normal identity from their hero one by acting differently. How could Aizawa turn that lecture into an assignment? Most of you seem to act as you normally would when you put on your hero outfits, except for a few select of you, Aizawa pointed out, eyeing them with boredom. The only student that I can firmly say is creating a type of persona is Midoriya. The rest of you don't change a single thing. Most of the class shrunk in on themselves, embarrassed for not changing themselves, or, in Midoriya's case, being so oblivious that his smile was for a show like All Might. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, just like it isn't automatically good. That's why, instead of forcing you all to create a here persona, I'm going to have you put on a peer's persona. Aizawa took a moment to pause, letting his students work themselves up into a furry of questions with this new information. If no one but Midori has a persona, how are we supposed to mimic everyone else's? Ashiro asked, confused. How will we decide who is who? Ida asked. We would draw lots and be allowed to choose for ourselves? Can there be more than one person? Are people just swapping roles? Hiroshi asked. Oh, can I be Yamamozu or Deku? Why the fuck would you want to be Deku? He just cries the whole time, Bakugo sneered. And Midoriya curled in on himself even more, if that was even possible. More questions filled the air, and after a few moments of excitement, Aizawa cleared his throat. The class quieted immediately. I will choose who gets who. There will also be one of each person. I will give you peer to copy, and you may not directly say who where you're supposed to be to any of your classmates. The point is to get into character as best as you can, without going into the other changing room, of course. Aizawa let the girls take a second to glare at Mineta, who flinched. Smirking, Aizawa added, I will give some of you more difficult personas, ones that will directly conflict with your normal actions. I expect you all to stay in character the entire day on Monday. Is there a prize for the best actor? Ashido asked, and Aizawa hummed before grinning wider. Sure. The student who acts the most like their character gets a perfect score. The student who successfully strays away from their own personality in order to achieve their characteristics gets five extra credit. The person who freaks out present Mike the most while achieving those other goals will get a free pass off any other assignment of their choosing. The class peered up at the offers, and Aizawa rolled his eyes as he watched the students grow determined to win. Sitting down, Aizawa quickly wrote down each of their students' name onto a slip of paper, then passed them out as the bell rang. Aizawa called out, Remember the rules. Don't tell anyone who you are. Do your best and stick with the character for all of Monday. Oh, if he only knew what chaos he had started. Monday starts about as normal as any Monday does, but a little off-killer from the very beginning. Usually, Ida is the first one to enter the room. However, today is different. And that's why Ochaka Uraraka is the first student to enter the classroom. Half an hour early to class, like an overachiever student would be. She walks with a stiff glance and her hands held high, a tense in her shoulder that is never there normally. She sits in her seat, digitally pulling out her notebook and sitting properly. Then she giggles. 
but nobody knows because she's all alone, except for Aizawa. But he was, well, asleep on the floor. It takes several minutes for the next student to arrive, now only 23 minutes remaining before class. Mina Ashida walks in, steps full more grace and far less bouncy than usual. Her hands are clasped pointly in her front of her, and then her smile breaks into a careless grin as she spots her peer. Hey, Raka, Ashida grins, a little too loud, and then she cringes. I mean, good morning, voice softer, with a polite nod, Ashida takes her seat. Eight minutes pass. With 15 minutes before the bell, the more students arrive. Ayama frowns as he enters, dark eyeshadow and mascara on in to attempts to seem gothic. This she prances into the room, giving a carefree wave as she drops into her seat. Jodo curls in on himself, but still gives a warm smile as he enters. Zero greets everyone politely and tries to be more at ease. Ojiro, however, seems to have a wider, almost fierce smile that seems just a little too big. Three more minutes pass. Twelve minutes remain before the bell. Dengi Kaminari comes in, mouth covered with a mask and surprisingly quiet for once. Kirishima walks in, waves, then pulls out a pocket of sugar and pours it into his mouth, only grimace at the taste, once, to his credit. Jiro walks in, blush on her cheeks and a kind smile on her face. Sho walks in, freezes, and then extremely shakes his limbs all six of them, and he greets them, as if trying to be more noticeable. Kuda walks in, still meek, but trying to gesture a mischief belt around his waist, then pulls out some glitter and throws it into the air. Ayuma breaks character for a moment to cheer Koda on, but Izawa seems to still be asleep, so his peers let it slide. Two more minutes pass, ten minutes remaining before class. Hakuro walks in with a loud keto before heading to her desk. Mineta walks in, cutting up cords hanging off his ears, and what looks to be purple balls sticking out of his chest. If Uraraka throws the boy out of the room, claiming it's her duty as class representative, no one bats an eye. She's staying in character, hands chopped and all. A minute passes, with only nine left. Todoroki walks in, calm as usual as he sits to his desk. Then he pauses, blinks, and says, you guys are so manly, in the most unenthusiastic tone the phrase has ever been spoken in. Another minute, with eight remaining. Mineta runs back into the classroom, quirks applied balls absent, and Uraraka lets him sit down. Tokoyami follows seconds after, looking at them with a disinterest before sitting at his desk. He does not say a word, and no one is quite sure if he's playing a character or not. Two minutes pass. Six are left. Yayoyozu walks in, expression one of regret as she passes the front before schooling into dimension. My apologies, Yayoyozu whispers, and that's the only warning Ashido gets before the normally primmed and proper girl tucks at one of the other's skirt, lifting it mere centimeters before running off, face bright red and full of remorse. The class stares for a moment before everyone forces themselves back into character, sure that their shock will end there. A minute passed. Five remain, and the class is proven wrong as Katsuki Bakugo walks in, head down, shoulders drawn, and for once the, seem, the boy seems to have found his belt and tie. His peers blink at how poorly the tie is done. Surprise. Explains why he never wears his tie, Hashida remarks, voice passive, and the class is surprised when Bakugo doesn't shout before remembering the goal of the day. Two minutes pass, three remain. Tenya Ida walks in looking displeased at being so late, even as he tries to relax. Sadly, the boy can't untense his shoulders as he wide smiles at his peers before dropping onto his seat. Another minute pass. The class grows restless. No one is quite sure how to talk to their peers because they can't quite tell who is who. A few obvious with Yarozu as Mineta, the poor girl, and Kirishima as Satoru but too many are just acting shy and some are just smiling wider than usual. It's not much of a change. The final minute passes. The bell rings. Aizawa stands up and looks around. Good morning, students, Aizawa says. Then all he gets a chance to say before the door slams open. And then Izuka Midoriya walks in. His normal bunched up, too short tie completely forgotten, shirt untucked, pants starting to sag. The class stares at him as he walks into the classroom without so much as a hello or an expression for his lateness. Nonchalantly makes his way over to his desk. 
or so they thought. Murir stops at a desk too early, glancing at Bakugo with a look of open disjunct that no one from UA has ever seen on his face before. Then he opens his mouth. What the fuck are you doing in my seat, shitty nerd? Midoriya asks. Lips parted into a sneer that is far too similar to Bakugo's for his peers' liking. Get the fuck up, Deku. Bakugo, apparently Midoriya, stumbles out of his spot, eyes wide and teary. Right, Kachan. He bows awkwardly before moving into Midoriya's normal spot, trembling even as Midoriya drops the blonde seat. A smirk on his face. No fucking way, Ashida whispers, breaking character, and Aizawa shoots her a glare that shuts her right up. Bakugo? Aizawa starts. And to one a surprise, Midoriya looks up without hesitation, but with a look that seems to try to defy authority's words. Try not to be late next time. Midoriya rolls his eyes, and somehow the action is enough to further shake his peers. Yeah, whatever. Let's just get started or something. He sounds bored, as if he's ready to just ditch class and go back to the dorms. Asawa does indeed start class, brushing off Midoriya. The rest of the class slowly look away from the grinette, and the day continues. The day continues, but it's one of the most bizarre days that 1A has ever faced and perhaps ever will. If one were to ask the students what they considered the oddest moment, it's unclear what would be final, definite answer. Some consider their peers' entrance to be the most shocking as it's their first impression they got of one another, and some personalities were so different they'd be integrated into their heads forever. Ashira would point out this moment as Midoriya and Bakugo's interaction had shaken her to her very core. However, others may point to different moments of the day. Ashira would point to the English class, where Yamada-sensei freaked out upon hearing one of his favorite students, yet again, Midoriya, talk. All right, listeners! Yamada cheers, spacking his hand on the board with far too much enthusiasm for a Monday morning. Who can tell me the correct way to arrange the following words? He gestured at the cluster of words that he had written, all in English, of course. Bonus points if you can explain why, of course. The room is silent, each student trying to figure out how they're supposed to react. Ashida, for one, cringes as she realizes that she should raise her hand as Yamamozu does. She doesn't know the answer, which is quite un like in her opinion. On the other end of the spectrum, Ida practically vibrates in frustration, knowing the Kaminari never answers unless he absolutely has to, and even then the answer is usually thrown together. It's rather frustrating in his opinion, and Ida makes a mental note to talk to the eccentric boy about this issue, and then probably wonders if making mental notes is breaking character or not. As Ashido panics, internally and Ida has a mental crisis, they start to edge towards mental breakdown territory. Yamada decides to call on one of his favorite students, oblivious to the reaction he'll get. Midoriya! Ida chills, and he noticed how Baku glancing up with a mere seconds of hesitation. What do you think is... It is, buddy. Midoriya slumps further into a seat, eyeing the board with obvious boredom as Bakugo makes a show of biting his lip, puffing out his cheeks in contemplation. I, uh, Bakugo stares, but it's too soft and Yamada doesn't notice it. Midoriya? Yamada tries again, and his smile drops into a soft frown when Midoriya once again doesn't pay any mind to the teacher. Listener, are you all right? Here, Midoriya does not look up but it is to roll his eyes and scoff. Yamada pauses at the noise and opens his mouth to ask a question when Bakudo finally speaks up. S Sensei, the word, the word would be, I will run with my friends on the Friday after the next. Right? Bakudo looks to Yamada with an obvious hesitant expression and a few students have to hold back their laughter when they see the confused look on their teacher's face. Ah, yes, Yamada says after a moment, nodding. That's correct, Bakugo. Thanks for answering. I didn't fucking answer, but go off. Midoriya murmurs under his breath, and those nearby do their best to hold in their laughter. Yamada blinks, looking at Midoriya with a confused glaze. Listener? Yamada asks. Eyebrows creasing as he slowly asks, What did you just say? Midoriya shugs, the movement fluent and lazy. Raising his voice, he repeats, I didn't fucking answer, but go off. Lips twitch in a smirk, he asks. 
Happy now, sensei? Yamada shakes his head lightly, lips curving downwards more and more with every passing second. But I, I was talking to Bakugo. Yeah, I fucking know, Midoriya snarls, and Yamada looks terrified at Midoriya's tone of voice. Excuse me for a moment, class, Yamada says, and then walks out, shutting the door. This action does nothing to give him privacy, as the entire class hears as the man shouts presumptuously into his phone. Shoto, what the fresh fuck is happening to Midoriya today? A pause, then. He's swearing, Sho. He never swears. Did you break him? Instead of the class, Midoriya doesn't even bat an eye. Instead, leaning his head back and shutting his eyes. Turning out the world, it doesn't act when a securely shaken Yamato returns, and the rest of the class is in awe at the boy's lack of reaction to Yamato's dramatic ones. Of course, there are moments that don't relate to Midoriya that are just as mesmeral. If one asks Jiro for her favorite part of the day, she points to many, many times that Hiroshima pulled out sugar at a complete random time, only to chug the packets with a slight grimace, then proceed to act like he's gotten stronger. Oyama adored every time Katsuki threw glitter, which usually happened after a teacher said something he liked, or during breaks between classes. Hashiro croaked out a laugh when Ida tried speaking in memes, only to utterly fail in his attempts, to the point that Kaminari broke character in order to give Ida a clash course in online humor. Some students don't stand out much on their own, but definitely shine when next to the right person. Todoroki, for example, seemed to expel the most when banging off Midoriya, complimenting the boy and actually smiling a few times. Tokoyami's character was only relieved when he followed Bakugo around breaking curves into subtle smiles and murmuring about how you're clearly All Might's child, Midoriya, which earned Todoroki a quick scowl before Bakugo remembered himself and giving a stuttered detail. And of course, there was the class that made, that broke st multiple students' impressions and confirmed everyone's belief that Izuku Midoriya is a terrifically actor. Foundational Hero Training. Class 1A heads off to their foundational hero training course at long last. The 12 students go to their lockers to change, with Uraraka having to throw Mina into the boys' locker room before slamming the door shut behind her, and everyone opens their case without any further excitement. And then Midoriya lets out a shark. Who the fuck let me grab the wrong case? Midoriya shouts and everyone blinks in surprise, first at the swearing, then at his apparel mistake, because Midoriya is holding case number 18, which is his case. Midoriya bro, that's not the wrong one, Kirishima points out, confused, but then lets out a squeal when Midoriya grabs him by the shirt and pulls him close. Listen up, sugar high, Midoriya snarls, and someone snorts. I don't know who the hell you think you are calling by Deku's name? but this isn't my fucking costume. Unlatching it, he points to the green jumpsuit and says, like I'd wear a bunny suit. None of the boys seem to know whether to laugh or cry at that, so they just stare at him as he turns to Bakugo, yanking the boy's case out of his hands before shoving his own in its place. The blonde in question glares at Midoriya for a moment, then quickly fixes his face into a pathetic frown before nodding, rushing into the costume. Are, are we supposed to swap outfits? Hanta asks and gets a few shrugs in return. I refuse to wear the cloak, Ayama says bluntly, pointing to Takayami's outfit. There's no shame. I don't think it could fit into Kaminari's. I mean my outfit, Ida says, awkwardly chopping his hands. Bunch of wimps, Midoriya complains, and then scowls as he puts on his gauntlets that come with Bakugo's outfit. Bakugo looks over, eyes narrowing as he looks at his gear his hands holding onto the brace arms that Midoriya usually wears. The 1A boy freezes, wondering if the two will break character over this. They, they wouldn't continue if it meant risking damage to themselves, would it? Luckily, Midoriya seemed to have a way to get around the issue without letting up a snarkly personality. Scowling, growling, he says, Deku, give me those stupid braces. Y yes, Kachan. 
Bakugo replies, forcing the setter as he holds out the request piece. In return, Midoriya shoves the gauntlets at Bakugo. You can carry these around. Maybe you'll be able to throw them better hits after carrying the extra weight. Midoriya complains, rudely, already putting the brace on and stomping out of the locker room. Bakugo follows through quickly, in a rather odd sight, seeing Bakugo in a green jumpsuit that's a few inches too small from his normal gauntlets and boots. Todoroki bushes as he puts on his costume, and Kirishima looks at him oddly. What's up with you? Kirishima asks, and Todoroki avoids eye contact. Meh, Bakugo looks extra manly today. Todoroki gets out, and Kirishima laughs at the expression. As it turns out, the girls have similar reactions to the sight of Midoriya in an explosive teen's tank top, including hero outfit. Midoriya, for his part, simply ruffs and looks away, acting as if he is unaffected by the attention. All Might blinks at the outfit, looking between Midoriya and Bakugo, with quickly growing confusion. Young Midoriya, All Might starts, and is promptly cut off by Bakugo's cheerful, Yes, All Might? All Might looks at Bakugo with apprehension, then rubs his eyes. Young Bakugo? He asks worriedly. What do you want? Midoriya asks, and All Might actually takes a step back, much to the growing delight of 1A. I may need to see Recovery Girl, All Might admits to the class, sheepishly. I do believe I hit my head on something. Nonsense, All Might, Uraka shouts, chopping her hands through the air. Our peers are simply doing an assignment. There is nothing to be concerned about. This seems to bring relief to the hero, who chuckles awkwardly before finally starting the lesson. Things, of course, only go worse from here. Mainly because All Might decides the day will be focused on sparring, specifically quirk fights. Unfortunately, when All Might calls out for the pairs, he uses their real names, which means that most students don't go where the teacher tells them to. A few do, but that's not only because they're set to fight one another namely Shiro and Ajiro, and, of course, Bakugo and Midoriya. All Might has the brightest idea to have everyone watch the individual matches, starting that they can improve by seeing what their peers do correctly and incorrectly, which means that everyone sees the shitho that promptly goes down the moment Bakugo and Midoriya's fight begins. Really, with how spot-on Midoriya has been all day, no one should have been surprised that Midoriya would change his fighting styles to match Bakugo's. But despite the obvious leap, everyone was stunned when Midoriya charged forward immediately, starting with an infamous right hook. That's Bakugo's opening move, Uraka murmurs, eyes widening in awe as Bakugo leaps out of the way, clearly confused by the movement and apparently irritated, if his narrowed eyes are anything to go by. He's so manly. Todoroki whispers when Midoriya dodges Bakugo's right hook, letting out a trance. Trying to copy me, shitty nerd? As if I'm that predictable? Oh shit, Kaminari murmurs once again, more breaking character. He's roasting Bakugo. I don't like that, Shiro murmurs, though one of his extra limbs then realizes his mistakes and winces. The fight only devotes from there, Midoriya throwing out insults and groating Bakugo, Rattling up the blonde as he efforts to lead the fight. A few gasps can be heard when Midoriya mimics Bakugo's expression. Fight. By flickering the fingers on the ground, using bursts of air to shoot himself above Bakugo in place of motions that help him land a solid hit on the blonde. Motherfucker! Bakugo shouts, and Midoriya laughs. Look at that! The nerd has a mouth on him! Smiling crudely, he asks. And here I thought that was beating out of you years ago. And everyone knows that the line is the killing blow when Bakugo freezes, only to restart with a shriek of rage and explosion of pumps. Everyone winces, worried for Midoriya, only to be soothed when the boy easily pins Bakugo, knocking him to the ground. Looks like you're still below me, huh? Midoriya says, voice competitively yet cocky, smirking crudely. I'm not surprised. You've always been a pebble underneath my feet. In a blink of an eye, Midoriya is thrown off Bakugo. The blonde shoves the green to the floor before storming off, leaving Midoriya on the ground. As Bakugo stomps away, screaming incoherently, All Might can only turn to Midoriya with a concerned expression. Are you quite all right, my boy? All Might asks, and the class watches as Midoriya turns with him with a sneer. I'm not your boy. 
Midoriya snarls, teeth exposed, and then scoffs as he pulls himself off the ground. As if I'll ever be related to you. Uraraka can't help but break character in order to console the number one hero, who, despite knowing that Midoriya and Bakugo have swapped personalities, seems hurt by the words. All Might would later admit to Midoriya that he had, indeed, been wounded by the scoffed insult, to which Midoriya would apologize with an abundance of tears. Midoriya, for his part, just stomped away from the sad hero, angrily muttering about how stupid Deku tried to impersonate me. As if on cue, the bell rang, ending the period. Awkwardly, the rest of 1A headed back to the changing rooms. Then their class wondered what their teacher will say upon their return. Asawa sighed as he looked over the notes, observations he'd noticed and comments he'd received from his co-workers written down for him to factor into his student's final score for the day. Glancing up, he scanned his 20 students, all whom currently worked silently, and recalls what he had seen and heard. Most did well. It was a fun activity, he supposed, so it made sense. Of course, most of them had flaws in their performance. Some, like Ashido, had an unfortunate habit of breaking character, especially when they wouldn't be noticed. The morning had especially bad, as it was obvious that the early students has assumed that he was actually asleep, as if he'd missed their first attempts at acting as someone else. He'd had to talk to those students, make sure that they understand that moments when they think they're safe are the most dangerous ones, as that's when an enemy can jump on them. Then there were those like Todoroki, who didn't seem to quite act well enough. Sure, Todoroki said all the right phrases and even stuck to the right friends once he knew who he was supposed and the most part but the emotion was non-existent. Words and actions aren't always enough. Emotions, fake or not, are also part of the equation when it comes to personas. And, of course, there was those who reducted their assignment class to one-off jokes or vague representations. While Kirishima's random consumption of sugar did clarify who he was, Sato is much more than that. Hell, if Kirishima had just mentioned a new episode for some random baking show, he would have been much better off than he is now, having down at least 30 packets of sugar. Finally, there was those who cracked after seeing how they were portrayed, like Bakugo, which in the blonde's case is quite disappointing because Bakugo had been doing quite well. The boy had nearly flawless in his expectation of Midoriya's little tics and actions, from the stuttering to the poor Dun Tai. If their sparring match hadn't been against one another, and Bakugo hadn't seen Midoriya had in immediately copied his fighting style, which Aizawa would get back to because that, that was impressive. Dare he think it, he likely would have gone the entire day without folding. He would have been competing with Midoriya for the perfect store, but instead Aizawa had to knock off some points for the final reaction, which brings Aizawa to the one student who did perfectly, Izuku Midoriya, set up to be Katsuki Bakugou. To be quite honest, Aizawa hadn't expected Midoriya to do so well. Midoriya is a rather timid boy, most of the time always flinching away from sudden movements and questions himself, but apparently most of the time doesn't include when Midoriya has to act, because Midoriya had come in, metaphorically guns blazing, going so far as to be late in order to make a grand entrance. From there, Midoriya had acted just like his peer, from the cursing to the casual slouch posture that Bakugo always has. Doesn't Midoriya have an analysis notebook? Aizawa wonders. Recalling a few mentions of the thing, he's pretty sure it was all about quirks, but Aizawa wouldn't be surprised to hear that it's got more than just that by now. And considering Midoriya has known Bakugo for years, the two coming from the same middle school and likely the same elementary school as well. Well, if Midoriya has been analyzing for that long, it's not too big of a stretch to see how Midoriya was able to copy the boy so perfectly. Although, a part of Aizawa is concerned about what apparently happened at the end of the fight. Midoriya's comments are... worrying, to say the least. He'll have a talk with the boy soon, but that's for another day. At least he'd scare the shit out of Tetoshi, Aizawa thinks with a smirk, nodding to himself. Aizawa gives Midoriya all three prizes. The perfect score extra credit, and a note that he has a free pass to get out of any assignment he wants. Aizawa doubts the boy will actually use it, but he earned it. Acting like Bakugo must have been tough. 
staying so far away from his own nature and having to face the surprised reactions of his teachers without as much as a flinch. Actually, Aizawa wonders how Midoriya would fare, acting as someone newer to him. With Pakugo, the boy has years to study his person. What if he'd only known the subject of choice for months and doesn't see them out of school? Midoriya, Aizawa calls out just as the bell rang. With the day ending, the problem child finally listened to the sound of his actual name peeking up. Stay after for a moment, will you? Midoriya nods, and Aizawa watches as the class empties out. It's only when the two of them are remaining that Aizawa smirks and asks, Midoriya, how would you like to impersonate someone else for tomorrow? Midoriya's eyes spark with anticipation, the question falling from his lips automatically. Who would it be, Sensei? Midoriya asks, and Aizawa hums. Myself. Aizawa answers, and Midoriya's shaky smile turns into a wide grin. I'd be honor, Midoriya says, and Aizawa finds himself mirroring the boy's expression. Perfect, Aizawa says, and internally he thinks, I can't wait to see how this goes. It goes wonderfully. Aizawa has to hide his smile when Midoriya walks in the class, seconds before the bell, a mug of coffee in hand, and a spare capture weapon wrapped around his neck which Aizawa didn't give him. How did Midoriya get that? With a tired expression worn in his face. Instantly, the silence is replaced with a mutter of questions. The rest of 1A is trying to understand this change of events. Midoriya glares at the class, and then Aizawa almost chokes because Midoriya's eyes seem to glint the dark, desperate, the boy not having a quirk to do that. Silence, or you're out, Midoriya says. The room falls quiet, except for one. Why did you get to dress up again? Meta asks. And Midoriya sighs and points to the door. Get out, Midoriya says. You're expelled. As the class devolves into a pandemia once again, Aizawa decides that he's completely okay with his decision. Maybe next time, they'll listen to my goddamn lecture, Aizawa thinks. And if he chuckles, only one green-haired boy actually catches it. And that is quite all right. I have the personal headcanon that Midoriya does both quirk and combat analysts while also doing personality and like mundane stuff like that for the fun of it like he does combat and all that just to like be able to be a better hero and then the other just because he wants to this he's just bored and he does it coming from someone who does or used to do a bunch of musical theater not musical theater hold up i've never been in a musical uh but just theater as in like plays and stuff like that i would love to do this assignment basically a play is that assignment right just getting into the character and just right i feel like if i would have done this like assignment but with the characters that i was acting on stage i would have had so much fun like uh that okay no that that has a name improv acting i think no not improv acting hold up that is improv is a completely different thing hold up i was also in that um improv no oh it started with an i it's oh somebody please put it in the comments it's gonna drive me insane as always make sure to eat sleep drink water take your meds and have a wonderful day or night join our community server link in the description and subscribe to see more of my content thank you so much for watching